Hello again. I'm back with the second segment of the invisible force surrounding us. I hope you enjoyed my last segment on CFL lights. Today we're going to take a look at the possible mechanism of how our body reacts to EMF fields. There are many theories and studies out there today, but I'm going to show you some demonstrations that may be proved to be of real interest to uh, many of you. Studies of EMF can easily be manipulated by special interest groups due to the fact that EMF is a great mystery to the average person. It's not something that you can reach out and see or touch, but with instruments it's possible to use common sense to determine for yourself whether EMF exposure is harmful. You have to ask yourself, do you want to take the chance once you start experiencing medical issues it may be too late? EMF exposure, as I have stated in the first video, is related to time and exposure level. In other words, considered harmful levels build up over time. Someone using a cell phone next to their head once a day may not be an issue. A person using a cell phone several hours a day next to their head may be at risk. The farther you are from a cell phone tower, the stronger the handheld phone signal will have to transmit. It boosts the signal according to the incoming signal from the tower. So if you have poor signal, which most of you know as the bars on your phone, you're much more at risk for heavy exposure. Today we're going to demonstrate the possible way that a human body is being stressed. Uh, the human body is composed of approximately 60% saline solution, or as we know it, salt water. Salt water is a very good conductor of electricity. If you want to check this out, it's easy to Google this and uh, find out that 60% of your body weight is water. Uh, many of you may not know that. We'll demonstrate this shortly, and some of you might be quite surprised at what you're about to see. I will first uh, demonstrate how a wire antenna picks up EMF to power a light source. I will then move on to demonstrate how a non-conducting plastic tube filled with saline solution will do the same exact thing. You can see how this will correlate to the human body acting as an antenna to pick up EMF fields, again stating that the body is 60% saline solution. With any common sense, you can draw your own conclusion from this demonstration. Your body operates on very small electrical currents compared to the levels that you'll see measured here. Uh, from many past experiments that I've run on myself, I have concluded that the mechanism for EMF harm to the body is probably due to stress that EMF exposure causes over time. Once again, I'm going to stress that time and exposure level is the culprit here. Your body repairs itself at night while you sleep. Cancer cells grow every day in all of us. Uninterrupted sleep without EMF exposure at night is the most important thing that you can do for your health. Your body repairs itself after getting into a certain sleep state and fights the cancer cells. Measure your bedroom. Move all electrical devices away from your bed. If you feel that you really need them, at least move them to the opposite side of the room. Fluorescent alarm clocks radiate a heavy EMF fields. Uh, keep these away from your bed. Kill your Wi-Fi at night. Put a timer on it. Uh, determine what time is the latest you're going to use and have it shut off and turn back on in the morning. No sense in polluting yourself with EMF fields all night while you're trying to sleep. 
Under no circumstances use an electric blanket that is plugged in while you're sleeping. The magnetic fields from these blankets can be very high. Electric blankets produce heat from electric current running through the wires that are pressing right against your body. 60 hertz line power running through these wires produce large magnetic fields. Do not even keep the blanket plugged in and turned off. Uh, fields are still running through these wires. If you must use the blanket, preheat the bed, then unplug the blanket from the wall when going to sleep. Oh, now we'll move on to our demonstrations. With this demonstration, we're going to show you a, a loop antenna of wire, uh, made out of wire, uh, with a little light source and a little handheld radio that we're going to show you here is going to be demonstrate how the field near your head from a transmitting device can uh, pick up enough electromagnetic energy to light a light bulb. Uh, these levels are uh, thousands of times higher than the electrical impulses traveling through your body uh, from your brain and your nervous system. So let me uh, key the radio up and go towards the bulb and as you can see as I get closer the bulb gets extremely bright and as I move away the field goes down rapidly so that'll tell you that you don't want the uh, any transmitting device too close to your head here we're going to demonstrate how a tube filled with salt water that mimics the same electrical distance as the previous antenna we showed you which was made out of wire which everybody knows wire can pick up electromagnetic energy but we're going to demonstrate how salt water saline solution in this salt water filled tube the same dimensions as the electrical coil it's going to pick up the energy and light this bulb. It'll be sufficient to light this bulb very bright. In fact, it's bright or brighter than the actual uh, a wire antenna. And we're going to do a comparison here to show you that uh, the body is composed of 60% saline solution on the average. You can look that up on the internet if you uh, want to. And it's uh, very readily available information. So we're going to put the little radio transmitter here which is smaller than a pack of cigarettes, smaller than most cell phones, and we're going to put it near the tube by the head. And as you can see, the closer I get to it, the brighter it gets. And let's move this a little bit so you can see this bulb better. And of course, it gets extremely bright as we get close to the head. And that's why using a cell phone near your head is not a good idea. As you can see, it's an exponential function. As I get six inches away, there's not enough energy. That doesn't mean there's not enough energy to penetrate you, but there's not enough energy to light the bulb until I get about six inches from it. So you can see how much difference it makes, just at a little difference. So using your cell phone away from your head with a, uh, a wired device or in the hands-free mode is a really good idea. Hello again. What we're going to demonstrate now is uh, something that will uh, really hit home with uh, most of you. Most of you use cell phones nowadays. I'm sure you've heard about the dangers of cell phones, but I want to demonstrate for you today the danger of using a cell phone near your head. Now, I'm looking at a meter here that measures magnetic, electric, and radio wave frequencies. It's been determined, and you can uh, go back to what I stated at the beginning of this video, that the magnetic field is the most dangerous to your health. So we're going to uh, read the magnetic field. We're reading the magnetic field in the 100 milligauss scale. I'll go down here and show you uh, that the meter is in the 100 milligauss scale, if you can see that. Then we're going to go back up to the scale reading, and I'm going to show you that right here, is 100 milligauss on the top scale, full scale, 100 milligauss, and then there's a red mark here, which goes well past 100, probably two to 300 milligauss when it pegs the needle. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, make a phone call to the home phone here. You'll hear it ringing in the background when I do this. And I'm going to put the uh, phone away. We'll probably get some feedback. And uh, then we're going to put the phone by the meter as if it was near your head. Okay, so you can see uh, what the effects of the field by your head, just as far as the phone is from the meter. So here I go. I'm going to uh, proceed to make the phone call. And when the home phone starts ringing, I will answer it uh, on the other end to keep the radio connection going. There it goes. We'll answer the phone. Okay, now we've got the phone going. And I'm going to put the phone, for the benefit of the doubt, towards the meter as if you were holding the phone. Because the uh, phone radiates more off the back. The cell phone companies design these so that the phone radiates more off the back so it's not radiating at your head as much. As you can see, I'm triggering this phone with my voice, which is sending out digital packets. Every time a digital packet is sent out, it pegs the meter at probably two or 300 milligauss. Uh, 10 milligauss is considered a dangerous level over a long period of time. A radiation on the human body is determined by a time exposure. To a certain level. Well, here we're hitting uh, probably 10 to 20 times the safe level, being right next to the, uh, the head. Now we'll move it away slowly, and uh, as we get uh, oh, we're about uh, three or four inches away. Nobody uses it like that. Uh, if they're going to use it, they use it in the speaker phone. They use it far away. Now we'll go to the three milligauss scale, so we can start moving this away. And as we uh, as we move away, we're uh, six inches away right now from the, uh, from the meter. And it's still uh, peaking maybe uh, three milligauss. Now let me uh, move it far away as if I was going to use it in the speaker mode. Now this is the way you want to use your phone. As you see, it's barely moving the meter. I've got it like two feet from my head, which is a very acceptable level to use this in the speaker phone mode. So basically, let's hang this up. Well, let's go back one more time and show you as I get close to it. It absolutely uh, destroy my meter on the three milligauss. Let's go back to the hundred and put it right there as if it's right next to your ear. And there it's right back uh, in the mode next to your ear, pinning the meter at about 300 milligauss. Let's disconnect this phone call. Burning up my minutes here. Okay, phone call is now disconnected. And um, as you can see, there's no uh, reading on the meter. There's nothing here in the room transmitting a magnetic field in that range, even in the... 3 milligauss range, it's barely moving from, from the equipment and the camera and stuff here right next to it. So that concludes why you should not use your cell phone near your head. I'll tell you, one of these days, there will be a warning on the back of your cell phone as there is on uh, cigarettes and asbestos. And believe me, right now, there's as many uh, paid off uh, people uh, paid off by the utilities to say that this is not dangerous as there is people that are saying it's dangerous So you make up your own mind and who you want to trust Let's see for the last segment of the uh, part two of the series of the invisible force surrounding us we're going to show you the uh, radiated fields from a cordless phone. Again, what many, many households have, and people sit on the phone for hours with this phone uh, perched up against their head. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate here again, as I did with the cell phone, is how much beneficial it is to keep the cordless phone at an arm's length away and put it in the hands-free mode. I know it's not as good, but believe me, when you see this demonstration for your health, you might consider it. So again, I'm going to put the meter in the 100 milligauss scale. Again, we'll reiterate this, 100 milligauss scale. 100 milligauss is right there, full scale on the top scale. And the uh, end of the red mark is probably well over 200 because it's sort of a logarithmic scale. So we're going to put the cell phone, as if you were using it, near the meter and turn it on. Now, as you can see, there's virtually no radiation Cordless phones are, I think I said cell phone, cordless phones are uh, actually safe sitting in the cradle. 
or turned off. But watch what happens when I hit the talk button and the dial tone comes on. Okay, now we're pegged continuously where you would have it against your ear at probably two or three hundred milligauss. Now I'm going to slowly move this away from it. As you can see, it gets to a hundred milligauss at uh, about uh, five inches from the sensor, and as I move it away, it's down to three milligauss right there. Let's slip flip to the three milligauss range. Right there, three milligauss, uh, about eight inches from the head. And then when I move it about, oh, let's see, an arm's length. I'm going to say I'm an arm's length right now from the meter. It's only uh, 0.3 milligauss, way below what is considered an acceptable level. So there you go. Make up your own mind. Do you want this against your head or do you want this? And uh, if I were you, I'd consider using a hands-free mode.